we de-emphasize the competition, but you want to win. You want to be at the Vic Theater with a thousand people in the audience screaming for your poem. But I think what people leave with is not who won or who got scored what or who took home three tens or whatever it is. It's like, you know, you come as an educator, you come as a parent to Louder Than a Bomb, and you are, I think, become astounded at the power and articulation of young people. When you see this kind of intelligence from kids who are on their way to Harvard and our kids who are about to flunk out of school sometimes, you know, you see that maybe the way we judge kids and their intelligence, maybe we have that wrong. And maybe it's in part we have it wrong because we don't ask them enough about what they think. We don't incorporate the reality of their lives enough into their educational space. We don't take that into the classroom. That's the source of where we could start the education process from, and that's where we start our writing prompts from. It's like, tell me where you're from. That's prompt number one, you know, I mean, that's it. And we begin to paint the neighborhood with, with language. I am the caregiver, the gatekeeper. I take care of everybody and I solve all the problems. Hi, Cody. Because my youngest brother has special needs, he always needed constant care and attention. And when my parents first got divorced, I took care of him. I changed his diapers and I fed him. I cleaned up after him. I put him to sleep at night. I bathed him. Like, I practically raised him because my mother was working three jobs to try to get us away from our dad's house. It just came natural to me that, okay, well, if he's not being taken care of, I'm going to take care of him. Cody, you want to go upstairs? Sure. Come on, come with me. <laughs> I'm going with you. Cody loves me. Will he remember how he slept in my bed every night after Mama left, and I held him like an extra pillow, or when my arms were his restraints, when Daddy said to put him in the middle without a seatbelt? So he would be the first to die in car accidents. Can he know how he found a mother in Big Sister? Mm -hmm. She silences crowds because her presence is that demanding. She captures your attention and she holds it and she takes you on a journey that is brutal and beautiful. My mother and my father were drug addicts. But like, you don't know what that is when you're a kid, you know? The thought of not being with my kids was not a bearable situation for me. But I also had a very supportive and praying mother. So when I couldn't, my mother did. He loved his grandmother tremendously. Staying in the house saved him. That's why his grandma gave him books. She didn't want him in gangs. She didn't want him on the street. I did always feel like distinct from my peers. When I was around here, it was because I was like the smart kid. Or, you know, when I was at summer camp, I was like the only black kid. Like, I always felt different. He's become a young man through this. And I think he does so much work and so much thinking and so much reading and so much observing of the world. He's moved on, and he should move on. You know, there are serious things for Nate ahead of him. I thank this forum for help making me so strong, for letting me talk about sex, drugs, basketball, and moms. Fine, farewell to this chapter and to all the joy and laughter. This for every kid whose voice has been louder than a bomb. One time I actually grabbed him in his collar and I said, you know what, you may be a gifted son, but you must know you came from a gifted mother and you can never pull one over on my head. Adam Gottlieb is one of the best writers we've had at Louder Than a Bomb. And also one of the most sincere, genuine, gentle people I've ever come across. Adam always liked to rhyme, just played with language a lot. And I remember in third grade, we had the social studies project mm -hmm. <laughs> about the talk Egyptians. About this on camera. No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe we got to such a bad place so fast. <laughs> Every move I make, whether it's a mistake or a triumph, they're only thinking about me being happy and doing what I want to do. 
I'm always kind of a little fearful sometimes when, for him, when he's in certain spaces, I'm like, oh man, you know, someone's gonna take Adam's lunch money. <laughs> Today's gonna be the day he doesn't get to eat lunch. She stands with her toes hanging off the edge of the stage, her whole presence squared like praying, like she can't blink even with the force of a storm behind her eyelids, shoulders shifting around each other like lovers, fierce like she's shouting before she even opens her mouth. Kids who come from all places of the city love him. They love him, he's a superstar. No matter how much you deny it, you really do want to make your parents happy. And when there's this correlation between what you want to do and what makes your parents happy, it like, feels like the sky's the limit. And that's how I feel. It's unbelievable to me. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know where, you know, I don't know how he was made. I don't know what, I, don't, I thought that they didn't make people like that actually. But that's how he is. Yeah. Steinmetz last year was a first year team to Loud and the Bomb. And they came deep. I mean, they rolled with like 50 people. One, two, three, Steinmetz! I think people were freaked out. It's really their energy and their love for being on stage, being with one another, their love of one another, the, the, their love of the form. And they brought that team mentality to it. It wasn't just about I doing well. It was about the whole crew. Yeah! That was amazing. We won last year, and I don't think we were half as good as we are now. I really don't see how we can lose. They think, well, we won last year, we'll win again. But we got to put in the work. He loves you. Love me back, I beseech you. I'm gonna pour water on the water on the <laughs> I'm always having all these thoughts racing, 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 thoughts bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth. But I just need to, you know, grab it and just order it on the page. You, you know, you know you ain't wrote nothing. Ain't nobody stepped up with me. And that's where all this animosity come from. If we don't win, it's gonna hurt more than anything. Since the beginning, it's always been a family thing. And if one member of the family is, you know, not doing what they're supposed to do, you know, you have to get back on track. You know, I'm gonna be real hurt right now. People are really starting to kiss me off. They're about to leave you. How do you appreciate shit that's not there anymore? Because they don't see it. It's not working for me. But it's working that's for us. We the ones for peace. I'm a part of us. We it's not working. Peace. It's not working for me. Everybody go home. 10, 9, 8, 7. Seven-year-old boy put six feet deep in the five-foot five coffin, wondering what four, four why three, three grown men have to, two, to drive by, and he does a couple of bullets, but... One. In Poetry Slam, winning does not mean you're the best writers. The, the points are ridiculous. You can't put a number on a poem. Winning means nothing. Don't let Adam fool you. Adam wants to win. Like, Adam's not on some like, it's all about to get, no fuck, he wants to crush you like a bug. Like a bug. <laughs> we have to win. <laughs> I'm a senior, this is my last year, we have to win. I refuse to go out without a bang. This is gonna be a special year for us. It's very easy to look at young people and see all of the things that are wrong. But to actually spend time with them and get to know them and push them and try and mold them, those are things that are needed. This is not the end. This is not the end. School is not the end. After this competition, it's not the end. I'm here to be a creator, so that's what I'm going to do. I've seen the people who've gone to nationals, and I'm like, what is their problem? Didn't they hear my son? <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen this year, but I really want so badly for them to do well and, and to be happy. But I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. The point is not the point, the point is the poetry, but it's also bigger than that. Without Loud and the Bomb, people like myself and Adam Gottlieb would have never met. People like myself and Nate Marshall would have never met. That speaks much louder than victory. That speaks louder than respect. That speaks louder than poetry. Writing a poem does not change the world. Learning about new people and understanding new people and really feeling inspired by people who are very different than you, I would like to say that that's changing the world. And if not, it's definitely coming much, much closer.